Good morning. What a beautiful day God has given us, made more beautiful by your presence here today on this first Sunday of Advent, where we are preparing for all the hope, peace, joy, and love of this season. And so we're glad that you are here and a part of this. If you're visiting with us online, glad that you have checked in with us this morning as well. If you're here in person today, and this is your first Sunday with us, we do have a special gift for you just outside the doors there into the Narthex area, a little welcome uh, desk. Hope that you'll stop by and pick that up. Just a little thank you for being here today. Hope you'll fill out a card. Let us get to know you a little bit better. A couple of announcements. We are definitely in the Advent season, as I mentioned. We have Advent services and events um, to be sure you are aware of. It's, it's in our weekly newsletter. If you're not getting that, Contact the church office and we'll set you up. It's also on our website. But here's a couple of things to be sure not to miss. Norcross tree lighting, a great tradition in this community. And once again, our chancel choir will be singing. That's coming up this Friday, December 2nd, 545 in Thrasher Park, downtown Norcross area. Hope you put that on your calendar. Come out, support our choir and support the community. Uh, speaking of choir, a Christmas Peace musical worship celebration is next Sunday, December 4th, in here at 11 a.m. Big Christmas cantata, the choirs and bands and everyone's working together uh, to make that a beautiful thing about peace this year. So hope that you'll come. Invite someone to come with you. It's beautiful music, especially this time of year. Also on December 4th, 6 p.m. in our Family Life Center, our church family Christmas party. Bring a covered dish. We'll be down here enjoying uh, the fellowship together and enjoying the, the food and the fun. And so put that on your calendar. Bring a covered dish, December 4th, 6 p.m. Jet Set Christmas Gathering, Wednesday, December 7th, 11 a.m. in our fellowship hall. Uh, for all our wonderful senior citizens and anyone that wants to come, the, the world-renowned, famous geriatrics will be singing that day. So I know you'll want to come and be a part of that. Uh, bring a covered dish. Meat is covered that particular meal. So that's Wednesday, December 7th. Women's Ministry Luncheon for Christmas, December 10th, 11 a.m., 1 p.m., Family Life Center. If you could RSVP by December 1st. For all the women of the church, Women's Ministry Luncheon, December 10th, 11 a.m. So much going on in the life of the church, especially during this time of year. A lot of traditions, and I hope that you'll keep up with all that through our website. Uh, one of my favorite traditions is the lighting of our Advent candle, and we have that for our first one, the candle of hope. The Arthur family, invite them to come forward at this time, as they'll come and, and do those readings and have our first lighting for us. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord, Psalm 122, verse 1. We are glad, whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged in or tuned in, we are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. Isaiah 2, 3. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope that we can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored, as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time of year when we wait with great hope and anticipation for all that you have planned for us. Restore our faith in the Christ of Christmas as we prepare to celebrate his birth once again. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Beautiful. Thank you, choir. Let's stand up and greet each other this morning. Let people know you are glad they are here this morning. Reach out your hand. Thank you for being with us online as well. Let's continue now with our worship back at our pew or back at someone else's pew. Let's meet together at number 203 in your hymnal or words are on the screen for our opening hymn, Hail to the Lord's Anointed. Please be seated. It's always a joy in the life of the church when folks come to join into the membership of the church. And we have that uh, wonderful opportunity today with Nidia Melendez is going to come uh, from the choir loft and come down and, and officially join into the membership here. Uh, you as a congregation will have a part to play in that later. Anyone that would like to come and stand with her, I think probably have a few folks, so y'all come down and, and stand with her as we welcome her today. So we have met together and gone over what all these questions mean and what, what it's about and why join here. And so Nydia's excited about doing that. And so the questions we talked about that day in my office, you get to say now to God. And that's who you're making these promises to. So first, I ask you about your faith. Uh, do you believe in God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Yes. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Have you been baptized into the Christian faith? Yes. Do you believe in the Bible, the teachings of the Old and the New Testament? 
and your desire is to join into the membership of this church today. In doing so, will you make a promise? Will you promise God to support this church with your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness? Yes. Amen. If you would, would you like to kneel here? And we'll stand behind you and, and put some hands on her shoulder. If you can't reach her shoulder, reach the, the shoulder in front of you. Let's pray together. God, kneeling before you as your child, we thank you for Nidia for all you've done in her life that's led her to this very moment. She has come to join into the membership to continue to grow in her faith. We're grateful that your spirit has led her to do so here. As she continues to do that, Lord, may we also grow in our faith, following after the example of Christ. So bless this, your child. May she serve you with great love and joy all her days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You'd stand back up. And congregation, you have a, a part to play in this as well as we receive her into the membership. Uh, let me say this to you, brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care to this person whom we this day receive into the membership of this congregation. Do all in your power to increase her faith, confirm her hope, and perfect her in love. If you would, would you respond? We rejoice to recognize you as a member of Christ's holy church and bid you welcome to the congregation of Norcross First Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and always. Let me officially welcome you as a member of our congregation. Let's welcome our newest member this morning. Welcome. You can be seated. I think the praise band has an awesome song for us now. We do have an awesome song, and I would like to invite you guys to all stand up and worship with us. The brand new uh, song that we're going to be doing, uh, we've got the lyrics on the screen. It's really easy. Hopefully you guys will be able to follow along pretty well. This is called Christmas Day.
Thank you all. Please be seated. Love hearing new Christmas songs. Thank you guys for sharing that with us. Now, this morning is full of hope, as we have heard, and the candle's been lit for us, I know, that during this season. Um, hope is an interesting word for, for a lot of people, and so I, I pray that you would keep that in your mind throughout this week, as we're reminded of that throughout the service today. I know that you have things on your heart, uh, prayer concerns, needs, and God wants to hear those, and we know our hope lies in that as he is our Emmanuel. Bring your concerns to him and your praises. Let them know. Be thankful. Thursday was Thanksgiving. So was Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Let's remember to be thankful each day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Spend a few moments in your quiet time with God and then I'll lead us in our prayer together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this beautiful day. We do thank you for the rain that we've received the last few days, so helpful, so needful, reminds us of how you provide. And in providing for all of our needs, as your word promises us, you also give us a life of hope. With each new day comes new blessings. With each new day comes hope. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow's not even promised, so we have right now, this day. And in this day, Lord, of, of hope, we look around and we, we see things that remind us of that. If we're not careful, we'll look back at times where we didn't see it. But allow us to live in it now, surrounded by your hope. For great is your faithfulness, your hope in us confidence in us we know Lord that you are an everlasting God and that you make us strong when we're weak for some Lord we are weak today we're solemn maybe a little down first Thanksgiving without a loved one first season without a loved one but yet in that we see your hope 
And even if we're just sitting in church and looking around and we see one candle lit throughout this service today, we're reminded that that's all it takes. Your light of hope within us. And maybe we'll realize it's not just for us. That light can shine through us for others. Hear our prayers, search our hearts, know us. We bring our concerns to you, our failures, seeking forgiveness. But also, Lord, hear our praises, our thanksgiving, our joyfulness, our hope. May we start this Advent season filled with that same hope. May we start this Advent season without thinking of of anything negative, of all the stuff that we have to do because it's Christmas, but let us look at it as the joy of getting to be in your house. We get to do this Advent season with you. God, we love you. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, for your Holy Spirit. Guide us by that same Spirit. Show us your way. And may the world see Christ and his hope in each of us. All this we ask, we lift up in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And we pray the prayer that he taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beautiful choir, thank you. And thank you for the way that you give to your church. It makes us such a, a huge difference in this community and the ministries that we do. So each week we, we do this out of love, 
and, and the hope that we give to the community around us. There's different ways that you can give. You can do so in person here on Sunday mornings. We do have the envelopes in the pews and our offering boxes as you leave. Uh, you can mail it in, attention to Nancy Garrison. You can go through your bank, through our website. You can text, just different ways to say thank you, God, and th different ways to, to give back. Let's thank God for our offerings. Lord, thank you for the opportunity you give us each day, each week, to live in your ways. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity you give us to, to give back through our tithes and our offerings. You love a cheerful giver. So may we give in faith, in hope, in cheerfulness, knowing, Lord, that you will receive these gifts today and throughout this week. You'll multiply them to the works of your kingdom here on earth so your gospel would spread, your kingdom would grow, and somebody would know Christ more. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to worship by standing and singing together, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I ask you to remain standing as we look into our scripture reading for today from the Old Testament. Looking into Isaiah chapter 40. Read verses 28 through 31. They'll be up on the screen uh, for you. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to open them as we look into God's word together this morning from the Old Testament prophet Isaiah. Chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. Hear, hear these words. Isaiah says, Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, open our, our ears, our eyes, our hearts, our souls to, to hear from you today. Remind us of the great hope that we have in Christ alone. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So here we are. We are in Lent. If you came to church last Sunday and you sat where you always sit, or even if you did the unthinkable and sit somewhere new, the church looks different. Unless you stayed after church, when which your husband would have taken you out to lunch, and you stayed and you noticed when you came in today, looks different. We're in the season. How many of you have already put up your Christmas decorations? How come some of you did this? How many of you put it up before Thanksgiving? Wow, a couple of you. Good, good. So we're in the season. I grew up, we didn't put our decorations up until December something. We waited until Thanksgiving was over, and the traditions of that still, still ring in my head. I enjoyed so much as a child growing up and decorating. You know, back then, tinsel was the thing, you know. So as I got taller, yeah, that, I was the tinsel guy. But we enjoyed that as a family. We'd turn off the TV, play Christmas music, drink eggnog, have Christmas cookies, and, and the whole thing. So this past weekend, we were in Knoxville with my parents and my sister and I and family and Sarah and my daughters got to decorate, got to help them to, to decorate. And it was fun. It was exciting. It brought back memories. We turned off the TV. We didn't have any eggnog. Mom said I had some, but it's past date. So we decided not to drink the eggnog this year. But we had so much fun, just the enjoyment and that memory. Christmas memories are something I think we all probably have. Christmas traditions are things that we, we pass on from generation to, to generation. And, the, and they're the good things. And then new people come in and say, well, here's some of my traditions. And so you start kind of putting them together. You might have noticed the tree isn't as big this year. Did anyone notice? The people that put it up noticed. But it didn't change anything, did it? It doesn't change anything that the tree's not as big. Because we're here to worship and to praise God and to remember the hope that we have. In the church, there are so many wonderful traditions. We're in a period now of about six weeks from Thanksgiving to New Year's where, where Christmas traditions are, are, are everywhere and the church traditions are ones that, that I love. Growing up, I remember loving listening to and watching and, and hearing about the candle lighting, remembering what each candle means and, and how it grows to, from one to the other to the other. And I started thinking, even at an early age, it's as if hope gives way to, to peace, it, it lights it, it goes to it and says, join me as we're in this season. And then, then it changes and, and they say, hey, joy, come, come join us as we continue these great traditions. Throw in love and then the Christmas candle and now it's the hardest night of the week as a kid to sleep. Christmas Eve. Hardest night of the month, of the year. How am I supposed to sleep with all the hope, peace, joy, and love that's going to be under the Christmas tree this year? Traditions. 
Lighting of the Advent candles for me is a great tradition. I love it. I love hearing it. I love thinking about what it means. And I love how it ties into something I've already heard before. Something I've, I've seen before. Something I've, I've experienced for myself before. And that's why the, the first candle starts with, with hope. Hope. Where's your hope? Looked up the definition of, of hope and I have a couple of different ones. The first one I read in, in Webster, a feeling of expectation and desire for a certain thing to happen. A feeling of expectation, something, and desire for a certain thing to happen. Hope. Oxford Dictionary says to want something to happen and think that it's possible. Hope. We think of things in a sense of hope going forward. It's something's going to happen. We don't put hope in our past. Oh, I hope things changed back then. It doesn't work. I, I hope that I can do something different going forward. In Christ alone, my hope is found. That one plays both, brings the past with the present even into something that you hope is coming. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. These are things that we're hoping for because of what we've experienced, because of what we've seen, and because of what we have heard. Hope. How many of you, when you sit down today, said, I hope this pew holds me up? Not a one of you. Not a one of you. You show up at church today, you didn't say, I hope we have church today. Of course we're having it. Our hope is in something that we hope is going to happen. But based on what? Based on our past? Based on other experiences? Christmas. Hope. Where is your hope today? What's it resting in? There are so many New Testament stories and, and readings about hope. Apostle Paul wrote a lot about hope, talked about how these other things happen that builds our character and our strength. Then it says builds our hope, and when we have hope in Christ, it never disappoints us. I think as a child, sometimes at Christmas, maybe we've been disappointed, right? We hoped that we got something under the tree. We, we hoped that, that maybe we would get a, a certain thing. And I'm not sure if that's necessarily a bad thing. I think we need to understand where our hope lies. Disappointment happens. And when we put our hope in things of the world, when we put our hope in, in people, it disappoints us sometimes. We're human. Things break. Things change. But when our hope is in Christ... Our hope is built on that solid foundation. All other ground is sinking sand. So we read a lot about hope in the New Testament. In the Old Testament as well. As Christians, we have heard about hope. We know about hope. Right? We've experienced it. Not a one of us should be able to say, I don't really know about hope. As Christians, we have hope. And we know where it lies. We know that our hope is in Christ alone. And that gives us everything we need for, for each new day that God gives to us. But yet we see in the, the scripture reading, prophet asking two questions. Isaiah asking, asking two very important questions. Starts with, do you not know? He was talking to a group of people, followers of God. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? As Christians, we know the answers to those things. Yes. Yes, you do know and you have heard. And in that lies your hope. You do know. You do know of the hope of Christ. You do know of the hope that God gives to us. You do know this because you've lived it. You're living it. And the plan is you're going to keep living it. So our hope is past, present, and future have you not heard well how many of us have, have heard the wonderful Christmas story how many of us have have lived in this hope and we do so every day so his questions to us as Christians seem pretty obvious yes definitely I do know and I have heard Isaiah asked these questions and I wonder if he thought anyone would answer 
Don't you know? And so here's some of the things that we know and our hope is in the scripture. He goes on to say our hope then is in an everlasting God. There's the first place we put our hope. As Christians, we put our hope in an everlasting God. Everlasting Prince of Peace. We give our, our desires of what we hope of something that's going to come, something that's going to happen into this everlasting God because he's always been there. He is with us now. And his promise is to be with us in the future. So you see, our, our hope is past, present, and future. Because of our everlasting God. The Lord is an everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God knows all, does all for us. And he has, I believe, hope in us. I believe God looks upon us with great hope. Great is thy faithfulness unto us, God, that you have this, this faithfulness in us. That you have this, this hope in your church, in your people, in your followers. That we're going to not just light a candle of hope and then blow it out until next week. That we're going to keep holding on to that great hope that we have in Christ alone. He's not going to grow tired. He's not going to grow weary. His understanding, we can't understand. But then he says, verse 29, our hope is this. Because God strengthens the weary and he increases the power of the weak. When we are weak, when our strength level is low, we have hope in an everlasting God that strengthens us. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Through Christ's strength. That's where my hope is. Because if I had all the, the hope in my own strength, I'd fail. I'd only get so far. But having hope in Christ and having the strength that God gives us, especially when we pour ourselves out for him, he fills us back up. He gives us strength to, to carry on. He gives us strength to get through the chaoticness of Christmas. Because Christmas can become pretty heavy for some people. It can become more task oriented we can be more concerned about the the decorations and, and the gifts and all the other stuff that we kind of lose hope in what it's all about so Isaiah is reminding us now remember Isaiah was the prophet that talked about the coming Messiah and we'll hear more about that throughout this this season he was already telling people the best is yet to come there's more there's hope Let's hold on to that. And let's hold on to that now and during, during this, this season. Isaiah was a great prophet. He told her the things that God told him to say. He gave hope to people that were listening. I always found it interesting, Jesus saying, those who have ears, let them hear. That, that wasn't an actual, if you were born with ears, you're, you're lucky because you get to hear. He's saying, pay attention. Look around, Listen. And you'll experience this, this great hope that Isaiah is talking about. And then for me, what I think is one of my favorite scriptures on hope, Isaiah 40, 31. But. And it starts with but. And I think that's interesting because usually but stops a sentence. Usually but turns a story somewhere else or it, it gets us back to something. So You've heard these things, you, you know these things, but are you doing it? Are you, are you really in it? Are you really listening and living this out? But, he says, those who hope in the Lord. Everlasting God gives us strength. But those whose hope is actually... Other versions say those who wait on the Lord. Interesting difference to me. Those who hope is in God. That's where you put your hope. Those who have this, if you would have this hope, your strength will be renewed. You will renew, will renew our strength, God. Those people that have this hope, we're going to soar on wings like eagles. We're going to run and not grow weary. We're going to walk and not be faint. This scripture is one that I use almost every time at, at a funeral because it's for the living. It's for those who's just lost a, a loved one and we need to be reminded of this great hope that we have in God. So all these other things are happening in the world, but if you have that hope, if you do so, you're going to have renewed strength. 
I know some people that as soon as they see the calendar getting close to Christmas, they become weak. They already start sinking in. They already start thinking about the heaviness and the got-tos of Christmas. So maybe this is a scripture for us. If we have our hope in the Lord, he's going to renew our strength. We're going to be able to soar on wings like eagles. That's a beautiful piece of imagery for me. I think as an early, early child playing the game, if you could be any animal, what would you want to be? My answer was always a bird of some sort, an eagle. I think, how amazing would that be? To just soar and just see all things, to experience all things, almost out-of-body experience, being able to look down. You're going to be able to soar on wings like eagles. You're going to be able to run and not grow weary. When's the last time you ran? <laughs> yeah. Scripture says if you're running and no one's chasing you, you're running from evil. Run and not grow weary. Walk and not be faint. Life gets heavy. This world gets heavy. It will squeeze out the hope of, of God if we're not careful. Even during the Christmas time, even during this Advent season, if we're not careful, we're going to grow weary. And then that little flicker is all we have instead of a bright shining candle. If we're not careful, we'll get weak. But, but those whose hope is in the Lord. So I asked you at the beginning of this message, where's your hope? What do you have hope in? Put it in things, you put it in worldly stuff, you put it in, in, in people all the time, you're, you're going to be disappointed some. But those whose hope is in the Lord, renew your strength. So if you're weak today, if you're feeling down today, if you're already looking at the, the half-twos of Christmas and you're feeling a little overwhelmed already, put your hope in the Lord. Let him renew that strength, that, that enjoyment, that, that childlike enthusiasm you have for, for the, the Christ of, of Christmas. It's an exciting, it should be the most wonderful time of the year for many, many people. And for many, many people, it's hard becomes heavy let's not do that let's keep our hope alive let's keep our our hope in the 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 christ of christmas that says haven't you heard this don't you know this already what are you going to do with it somebody needs to hear some hope today and somebody may need to hear that from you so throughout this advent season each one of our our sermons is going to stop be about give them give them hope Next week, give them peace, give them joy, give them love, give them Christ. For that person that's on your list that's hard to give gifts for, give them hope. Let them experience the hope of Christ in you. And for goodness sake, keep your hope in the Lord. Let's pray. God, thank you for the hope that you give to each of us. It is a beautiful and wonderful gift that, that we take for granted many times. We just look at things and that's how it's supposed to be and don't give you credit for it. But Lord, sometimes the world gets in the way and sometimes we lose hope. So I pray, God, that as we start this Advent season together, that we would be reminded of the great hope that we have in Christ. The great hope that we have because of Christ. All of the ground is sinking sand. Keep our hope on you. So that you will renew our strength. You will help us to soar on wings like eagles. You will help us to run and not grow weary. You will help us to walk and not be faint. Let your light of hope shine through us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. As you're able, let's stand together for our closing hymn. It's number 206 in your hymnal. I want to walk as a child of the light.
Now go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Know that you do not go alone, that you leave this place with the hope of Christ. Give others that hope today and always. Go in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you.